which is the, we had a, there was a vote last night. We moved a motion yesterday to reintroduce an eviction ban. And the government, uh, the government and Danny Healy Ray, one of the two Healy Rays, uh, voted it down very scandalously. And um, so people have seen the numbers of homeless people is, emer- people in emergency accommodation, there's more homeless people than that, mm-hmm. is heading to 13,000 uh, people, 4,000 children. Um, the rate of increase in homelessness has rapidly accelerated since the eviction ban has been lifted. Um, we previously had passed in the doll, it's what's called second stage, like in broad principle, passed our bill introducing an eviction ban. And this was an emotion to say this needs to be uh, introduced uh, immediately. And scandalously, the government opposed it completely, said, you know, we, it said a bit of eviction ban would be counterproductive, absolute madness. Um, and just shamefully, shamefully voted down the idea of having an eviction ban. We're now in at the end of September, heading into October, heading into winter, and the government is happy for people um, to be evicted. And the fundamental reason, they don't like it when you say it, they really didn't like it yesterday when we said it, but the fundamental reason is that this is a government that represents the landlords, that does not represent the interests of renters, in particular represents the interests of big landlords. And that's also proven not just by their opposition to the eviction ban, but if you look at what their big idea is for the coming uh, budget. What their big idea for the coming budget is the idea of tax breaks, tax break for for landlords. That's their answer to the housing crisis, is to give more tax breaks to landlords. And what that means, in effect, is they're saying that landlords should pay less of a percentage of their income in tax on their, what is, like, unearned passive income, right? That you're not going out to work day to day, they own the property, they're renting it out. They're paying less of a rate of tax on that than the tax than the rate of tax paid by renters uh, on earned income going out to work every day to pay rent. They want the the, the, the landlords to pay less tax than uh, the renters, supposedly because oh that'll ensure a stable rental market, etc., etc. And um, there's all this talk of like oh a flood of landlords exiting the market, but actually figures came out from uh, the CSO. I'll talk in a second about that three-tier uh, disability. Um, definitely, it's absolutely scandalous what they're talking about. Um, but they, they like to talk about a flood of landlords out of the market. But CSO figures came out recently to say that the number of rental properties over the last six years, I think, had increased by, I think it was 9%, or 7% or 9% over the last six years. So there's an increase in the size of the rental market. And um, there's a massive increase in the amount of rent. So av- average rent over that period of time has gone from just over €200 Euros a week to almost €300 Euros, uh, a week. Obviously, we know many, many people, particularly in Dublin, are paying much, much uh, more uh, than than that. Um, so as a whole, of course, you'll find the odd landlord doing badly and so on. But as a whole, landlords are doing very well. And the idea that they need to have um, extra tax breaks, you know, really shows on whose side the government uh, is on. And to the extent that they say, oh, well, landlords are going to re- leave the market and that'll be a problem for tenants because they'll be evicted. There's a very, very simple answer, which works for everybody, which is that the state, and this is what we've been advocating since the start, and they've partially implemented it with the idea of a tenant in situ scheme. But, um, uh, the idea that the state should buy the properties from the landlords. You want to leave the market? Fine. State will buy the property at market rate, no problem. Um, it works. The landlord gets out of the market. They want to get out of the market, no problem. It works for them. It works for the tenant who gets the benefit of security of tenure. They now have uh, a tenancy with the council. Um, and it works for the state. The state is now getting a rental income and has an asset and has prevented someone becoming uh, homeless. So that's the answer. Expand the public housing stock, not throw more and more tax breaks at uh, landlords. Um, Just to go to the question asked there by Coley on Instagram and also someone mentioned it, um, Ryan mentioned it on, sorry, it was Coley on TikTok and Ryan mentioned it on Instagram about the the three-tier disability uh, work. So people might have seen, I raised this in the doll uh, yesterday with the Taoiseach Leo Varadkar um, there's this. There's a proposal f- that they've brought out, which is to introduce basically three different tiers for a disability allowance and domiciliary care allowance, and um, that you'll get a different amount based on your capability of working. So if they say, oh, okay, you've got no, you just can't work at all, fine, we give you a bit more money than we currently give you. If we say, oh, you can work a little bit, we give you about what you're currently giving you. And we say, oh, you really should be able to work more. You should, should be able to work. We give you even less. Right? And, and what this is about, it is like, 
It's about discriminating between people. It's about putting people through like horrendous medical assessments, checks designed to drive people out of like disability allowance that they should be entitled to, that they pay taxation uh, towards. Um, and I, I put it to Leo Varadkar yesterday in the doll. I said, have you ever seen I, Daniel Blake, filmed by uh, Ken Loach, which is a really excellent film? Um, because it's, it's about this. It's about what's called the work capability assessment in Britain, which is the exact model that they're trying to tackle, to try to copy here. Um, and I said, have you ever seen it? Because it seems to me that that's, that's what you're trying to do. And it's, it's like a heartbreaking film of these people who are disabled. It's a guy, an older man, whose doctor says, look, you cannot work. It's not safe for you to work. Um, and the assessment office, like, you know, puts his file through a machine and says, no, no, you can work. And he's like, no, no, but you haven't talked to my doctor. My doctor says I can't work. I physically cannot work. And he gets cut off uh, disability. Um, and, well, I won't, I won't give the end away. You won't watch the, the movie. But it basically, it's, it's a heartbreaking story about him. There's a younger woman who's in a similar uh, position. Um, anyway, Varadkar's answer was to say, oh, yeah, I've seen I, Daniel Blake. I remember him saying that before. He said, I saw it when I was Department of the Minister for, for Social Protection. And he said, it's a very good movie. Yeah, but then he said, but it's a one-sided movie because everyone in the movie is a genuine claimant. They all genuinely have disabilities. And he said, that's only one side of the story. There's another side of the story, which is shown by programmes like Benefit Street. So Benefit Street is this programme, I'm fairly certain it's not on anymore, but it's like, widely condemned as, quote, poverty porn, which is about like everyone on the dole is like a scrounger, you know, just living off benefits, living a high life, etc. It doesn't, doesn't depict the reality at all. And he's saying, oh... And he literally said, well, the answer is the truth is somewhere in between the two, you know. It's just horrendous stuff, like really horrendous Tory mindset that like people are on disability allowance for the laugh. Like if the, the government, the, you're either fit to work or you're not fit to work. Um, if you're never going to be able to be fit to work, which for many people that's clear, they should allow people to go on invalidity pension. Um, and if you're serious about getting people back into the workforce, well, then put obligations on uh, employers to facilitate uh, people. That's the answer. Well, most people are fit to work, of course. But most people do work, uh, Kira. Uh, Car sorry, Carla. And um, this is for people who have disabilities who cannot uh, work. Um, where's my megaphone? I think it's out in the office in Tala at the moment. Um, uh, anyway, so this is scandal. Hopefully, hopefully, Riker kind of put his foot in the mouth on this. And... Uh, we can maybe try and use that to expose what they're trying to do, to say this is a Tory model that they're trying to bring in and to try and bring up um, opposition uh, to that. Can I actually fix the problem rather than yapping about it? Well, Edward, I don't know if you were listening at the start. So we, we brought in a motion yesterday to bring in an eviction ban immediately. So that was a proposal to fix the problem and the government voted it down together with Danny Healy Ray. Um, so on our own, we're in the opposition. We're a party of five people, Solidarity and People for Profit uh, together. Mm -hmm. We can't pass laws on our own. So what we rely on is people like you getting mobilised, organising from below, putting pressure on the government to force things through and to engage in, in victories. I, unfortunately, I don't... I mean, I think we have the answers in terms of the eco-socialist policies that are necessary, but we have a right-wing government that is implementing right-wing uh, policies. So the best thing that I can do is, is precisely... To, to try and make the changes in the doll, but also to talk to people, to explain what's happening, to try and encourage them, for example, to come out on the protest on Saturday the 7th of October and to say, we need to have um, a, an eviction ban, you need to pull back on this proposal for a three-tier system for a disability allowance, and we need action to protect people from the cost of living and housing crisis. So that's 1 o'clock, 7th of October, Saturday, um, at Parnell Square in uh, Dublin. Um, Da, da, da. Just look through some of the things. Yeah, the people on that show were on job seekers, not disability. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, but like he he was saying that that's that that's basically it's about, that it's about disability now. That's what he was implying, and, and that the answer is somewhere between uh, Benefit Street and uh, and I Daniel uh, Blake. Um, Will we scrap what we get in power? Yeah, we definitely would scrap the um, that idea. And in fact, we, we have a proposal for a kind of a cost of disability allowance on top of the basic payments. Because it just, there's a big, there's a good, quite a good story in the Irish Independent today. Like, it costs a lot to have a disability. Um, so you need an extra um, 50 euros a, a week. Um, how could someone organise a strike? Um, that's a very good question. Um, join a union, first of all. Um, organise your workmates in that union. Um, and then talk to your union official um, and talk to your union branch and uh, 
you need to ballot for a strike, and then you can you need to win a majority of your workmates, and then you can take uh, you can engage in uh, strike action. Feel free to contact me, send us an email if you want, paul.murphy at aractus.ie if you want more assistance on that. We have a trade union department who can uh, definitely help people. Um, why do TDs keep taking and taking and taking unnecessary pay rises? A good question. Um, because they're completely out of touch, this makes them more out of touch. Um, because they represent the rich, they see themselves as part of uh, the rich. People for profit don't take any of these pay rises. All our TDs are on an average worker's wage or less. Um, because we think we need to live the lives of ordinary people, like not kind of lives that, that other TDs uh, live and we think all TDs should be on that you know if if TDs were on the average workers wage well then they have an incentive to see wages go up as opposed to coming down um, so yes would Claw Supply also ask a similar question when's the next election um, uh, well the next local and European elections are definitely at the start of June next year the next general election by its latest has to be in February of 2025 but I would think it will be a few months before that. Um, so any people appeal for profit standing for Leash in the next election? I don't know. I presume so, but I don't know. We don't have a right-wing government. I think we definitely have a right-wing government when they're aping what the Tories are doing in terms of disability allowance, when they're voting down an eviction ban, when they're in principle opposed to price controls, uh, when they make the corporations pay almost no tax, when they allow big tech companies to come before anybody else in terms of climate... Qualifies as right wing government. Uh, it's not a far right government, but it's a right wing uh, government. Um, what are your opinions about what's happening with Iceland? You mean Iceland, the shop, yeah, rather than the place? Um, I think it's it's really scandalous. Um, so I did a press statement, actually, a press conference during the week organised by Joan Collins, calling for um, uh, calling for people to boycott the other stores owned by Naeem Maniar, who was the guy who owned the Iceland franchise in Ireland. Um, they include um, Sense. Uh, I'll I, I just quickly check what the other companies are now and tell you. Um, one of them is Sense, and then there's a Cafe and another one as well. Um, i got a few now in a second. Yeah, Sense, Home Savers, and Brentwood Coffee. Because it's scandalous. Your man is still operating other profitable businesses, put his workers on a scrap heap, left them with unpaid wages, thousands of euros unpaid wages. Um, it shouldn't be legal. Our, our Debenhams bill, which the government is holding up, would change that, would stop uh, that. Um, but um, at the moment it is, um, and I think people should, should boycott his other businesses and, until he pays the workers the money what um, he owed. Did I vote yes for the hate speech bill? No, uh, Roshan, if you go back, you'll see I led the opposition uh, to it in the, the doll. I was the one who called the vote uh, against it. Um, Please bring up the next session the 12 weeks the supermarkets were given to cop on. Good point. I will do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so cop on or we'll do nothing like, you know, and you keep putting on your prices. Um, that's, that's why we need price controls. And again, people don't know it. Well, some people don't know it. But like Musgraves, uh, Glambia, the big retailers, the big agri-food companies, Tesco's, they're all making super profits. That's where your money is going whenever, um, whenever you're, um, you're passing these things. Can you actually do some work in the doll instead of running this country into the ground? Uh, I'll do my best, yeah. That's what I try to do. Um, stop farming in Ireland for Brazilian beef from burnt down rainforest. Um, I don't think anyone's saying we should stop farming in Ireland. Um, and it's certainly horrific what particularly Bolsonaro did uh, together with the agribusiness in, uh, in Brazil. They just like exactly burnt down the lungs of the earth and in terms of Amazon, to make way for, for farming. Um, but I think Ireland's current model of farming, with its emphasis on industrial beef and, beef and dairy, isn't sustainable. It's not sustainable from the point of view of carbon emissions. It's not sustainable from the point of view of um, water quality right across uh, the country. Um, it's not sustainable from the point of view of small farmers who are not doing well. Majority of small farmers, big majority, forced to go have extra jobs. So I think we need a different sort of farming model which doesn't cater for the very rich the very biggest farmers, the big agri food companies, but instead caters for our small farmers and uh, are uh, in ensuring we have a decent uh, environment. Um, disability reform proposal, I spoke about that earlier, I don't know if you got it. Um, a lot of people are very stressed over it. Um, yeah, it's horrendous. We're going to do our very best, build opposition in the doll to force them back. Um, someone is saying, help my family, Paul. If you messaged, if you email me, paul.murphy.ie, we will... Um, 
we will get back to you. Did you pay your TV license? I've not paid my TV license uh, in solidarity with all those who are not paying in opposition to... Um, it's, a, it's a regressive tax. It's an unfair tax on ordinary people. Um, I think it's completely un, unfair tax. I think the tax should be scrapped. Um, we've put forward a proposal for RT for the people to say how it should be replaced by a big tech tax and um, it should uh, uh, and increase then funding to not just RT but public sector broadcasting across the uh, country. Um, we'll be going to Coalition with Sinn Féin. It's a question we get every single time, but that's all right. It's the nature of life. Fair enough. Um, we would, if there was agreement on um, key elements of an eco-socialist programme, in other words, a government that is actually going to stand up for ordinary people, that is going to take on the big corporate landlords, take on the private developers, take on the big business uh, polluters, um, take on the energy companies. So, for example, not re commit to renationalise the energy uh, sector, commit to have a, a minimum wage of at least 15 euros an hour, uh, commit to pull out of all the military projects involving NATO and European Union, etc. Um, so if there's the, the numbers for a left government after the next election, we would negotiate with Sinn Féin about that. If there isn't agreement on what we think are, are red lines, well then we would still vote for Mary Lou Mac Macdonald for Taoiseach and we would vote then every positive thing they do with support, but if they break their promises, go against ordinary people, um, uh, would go against uh, people. Uh, would sorry, we'd, we'd then vote against them and, and try and mobilise people outside. Um, do I think Ireland will legalise cannabis or will it all talk? I think we certainly will eventually. It's a question of how long that uh, takes. Um, to, 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 it's choice. I, I finish with a couple now, right, because my voice is, is beginning to go and I have an important committee meeting I have to go to shortly about um, the Temple Street scandal um, with, with Children's Health Ireland. But it's choice-based letting actually working. So choice-based letting is a system run, I think most councils use it now, to allocate social housing. And it's like, you know, you, you go into a like, mm -hmm. online thing and you put your, your, you say, I'm interested in that house. I mean, it's working in a technical sense. The issue is it's not working because they're not building anywhere near enough social housing. And the housing lists are getting bigger rather than smaller. So that's, we need to have a state construction company. We need to prioritise the building of social and genuinely affordable uh, homes. Do we live in United Ireland? Is it Solidarity people for profit policy. It's uh, certainly people for profit policy. Uh, yes. Um, even I'll just find a question that's referenced there. Da, da, da. Sorry, even uh, Isabel asked, what would you suggest for a low income? Uh, families that depend on sheep shops like Iceland. Well, I, I think we need to have price controls to. Um, make shops affordable for people. Do you know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't be... We shouldn't have a situation where one in ten families in this country are reliant on uh, food banks for, in order for people to be able to feed their, their children. That's absolutely scandalous, you know? Uh, opinion on climate change. Do I believe it? I definitely believe it. I definitely believe that it is uh, man-made, or more precisely, uh, made by capitalist system where private profit comes first. And unless we have, like, radical system change to stop society being run in the interest of private profit, um, it's going to be a very unpleasant world for our children and our grandchildren to uh, live in. Um, show a backbone. I've got a jumper and a shirt on, so I'm not going to show you my backbone right now. Um, all right. Good luck. Uh, I'll see you next week, hopefully. Thanks a lot for joining in. Sorry if I didn't get to your question. I'll hopefully um, get to it next time.